Welcome to Electra Online, and now let's take a look and see how the colligative property of a liquid, of a solution, changes the boiling point and the freezing point, and how that affects the way the phase diagram looks. So let's see if we can make some sense out of that. So first of all, here's the typical phase diagram for water. Of course, you recognize it, that it's for water, because the line right here is actually has a, a negative slope rather than a positive slope. All of the substances tend to go like this, but for water it tends to go like that, which means that if you have water in the solid phase, ice, and you increase the pressure, eventually if you increase the pressure sufficiently, you will actually begin to melt the ice and turn into liquid under pressure. That normally doesn't happen for most substances, and the reason why it happens for water is because when water freezes, it expands, so when you put enough pressure on it to cause the density to increase, for it to be uh, you know, more dense, then you actually push the molecules back together and turn it back into a liquid with increased pressure. Under norm circumstances, you can see that at one atmosphere, the boundary between the liquid and solid phase for water, it happens at zero degrees centigrade, and the boundary between vapor and liquid it happens at a one atmosphere, which of course that means that's the boiling point of water. So what happens now when we add a solute to the pure water, so now that we have a solvent with, with uh, some ions in there, that will then raise the boiling point and lower the freezing point. And what happens then is the, so this, this would be the curve for pure water, and that would be the boundary between liquid and vapor for pure water, and of course there's also is pure water right here, pure water, H2O. Again, that would be the boundary between solid and liquid. Now, what happens when we add a solute to it? Well, it lowers that boundary. It then creates a new boundary down here. And notice what that means is that at a pressure of one atmosphere, before the water will begin to boil, you will need a higher temperature. So that would be this line down here. This would be the new temperature for the boiling point, which is 100 degrees centigrade, plus the change in the boiling point temperature required or caused by the solute being added to the, to the uh, pure water. So what that happens is it lowers the vapor pressure of the water, so you will have less vapor at the particular temperature, so to get the same amount of vapor pressure so that water will begin to boil, which is of course a vapor pressure of 760 torr or one atmosphere, you simply require higher temperature to achieve that. On the other side, you will see that water will go from the, from the solid phase to the liquid phase at a lower temperature. So you'll have a line now that looks like this. And see for water then, water will then begin to melt from a solid to a liquid at a lower temperature. Right here, and you can see now that the freezing temperature of water will equal zero degrees centigrade minus the change in the freezing temperature required to cause water to go from a liquid phase to a solid phase. And so that's how our diagram will then change. Simply, we have lower vapor pressure here, and water begins to melt at a lower temperature by adding a solute to it. And that's how you, how you have the change on the phase diagram. So here, that would be for the solvent. Just put it in there to make it clear. And here, that would be the curve for the solvent right there. All right. And uh, that's how you have the change on the phase diagram by adding a solute to the pure water.